In the quiet fields of Nebraska, farmer Stephen Sanders made a startling discovery on his property, a mysterious hole that appeared to plunge into the earth's hidden depths. Intrigued, he couldn't resist the urge to explore, but what he found lurking in the shadows below left him utterly speechless. Underneath his farm, Stephen came face to face with a group of people who seemed out of place in the modern world. At first, Stephen was frustrated with the young worker. The boy had called him out for what Stephen thought was a silly prank, and now he was even jumping in front of his car. It seemed like the boy was asking to be fired, but then Stephen noticed something strange. Where the road should have been, there was no sign of tire tracks. Instead, there was a massive hole in the ground. The worker had been telling the truth. What Stephen didn't realize was that he had only seen a small part of the hole. When he got out of his car and walked closer, the full size of the discovery hit him. His jaw dropped. He had never seen anything like it before and couldn't figure out how it had formed. Was it a giant sinkhole, a meteor crash, or maybe even an earthquake? None of these ideas seemed to fit. Back at the farmhouse, the duo hastily laid out a large canvas sheet on the living room floor. With a pen and pad, Stephen began listing items they'd need. Ropes, lights, safety gear, he muttered, scribbling each item down. Timothy nodded, adding some food, water, and maybe a first aid kit. Sensing Stephen's apprehension, Timothy placed a reassuring hand on his shoulder. Hey, I get it, he said. It's not every day you find a mysterious hole on your property. Stephen looked up, a mix of excitement and fear in his eyes. It's not that, he replied. I trust you, Josh. It's just, I've never done anything like this. Timothy smiled. Don't worry. With the right gear and my knowledge, we'll be fine. The comforting glow of daylight was now entirely behind them. The oppressive darkness of the cavern surrounded them, broken only by the limited radius of their lanterns. Shadows played tricks on their eyes, morphing into fleeting shapes before disappearing again. Every footstep, every drop of water from the cavern ceiling seemed magnified in the stifling blackness. Their reliance on the lanterns became absolute. The vastness of the cavern distorted every sound. Their footsteps echoed, bouncing off unseen walls and reverberating back as if many others were with them. Amidst the echoes, Stephen thought he heard the faint hum of a lullaby. Or was it just the wind's passage through the cave's labyrinth thing channels? As they continued, the ground beneath them started leveling out, signaling that the cavern's floor was near. They could make out vague, shadowy shapes ahead. Venturing further, they came upon a clearing of sorts dominated by a circle of life-size statues. Each statue was meticulously carved, depicting a figure, some standing, some sitting, all in various poses that suggested scenes from daily life. Their faces were stoic, their eyes empty, yet seemingly watching. Stephen and Timothy exchanged glances. Who were these people? Stephen wondered aloud. The two began constructing theories. Maybe this was a refuge during a great war, Stephen suggested, or a sanctuary for a particular group. Timothy, meanwhile, pointed to the symbols etched on the walls. These could be clues, he said. Perhaps this was a place of worship or a sacred burial ground. As they sat surrounded by the silent witnesses of the past, an old legend whispered its way back into Stephen's memory. Grant by used to speak of a tribe that vanished without a trace, their existence becoming a myth over time. Gazing around the cavern, Stephen mused, could this be their final resting place? The stillness of the cavern was suddenly broken by a low, distant rumble. The ground beneath their feet vibrated, sending a jolt of alarm through both men. Earthquake, Stephen asked, his voice carrying a hint of panic. Steadying himself against the statue, Timothy replied, I'm not sure, but we shouldn't stay to find out. Without another word, they gathered their gear, fastening their harnesses in haste. The echoing tremors seemed to chase them as they began their hurried descent. The mysterious world below faded into darkness, but their sense of urgency was clearer than ever. Word spread like wildfire, and by evening, a sea of cars lined the field. Families, adventurers, and the simply curious congregated, all hoping for a glimpse of the enigmatic pit. As night deepened, the distant wail of sirens grew progressively louder. The crowd hushed in anticipation all eyes drawn to the approaching line of police cars. Officers stepped out, their radios crackling and their expressions stern. Everyone, please remain calm, their leader announced, surveying the scene with a practiced eye. Amidst the chaos, Timothy's pulse raced. 
Thoughts of potential consequences and interrogations weighed heavily on him. Stephen, he whispered urgently, maybe we should leave, lay low for a while. Stephen, caught off guard, took a moment to process the gravity of the situation. We can't run. It'll only make things worse, he responded, though his gaze betrayed a similar anxiety. The police methodically began establishing a perimeter around the hole, cordoning it off with bright yellow tape. For your safety, please step back, they instructed the crowd. By morning, a new set of vehicles adorned the farm. Vans with logos representing various geological and archaeological institutions. Experts, donned in protective gear, conferred with one another, clipboards in hand. Their leader, Dr. Lana Turner, wore an expression of constant curiosity, often sharing hushed conversations with her team. We're on to something monumental. She'd whisper, excitement evident in her voice. Preliminary assessments carried whispers of a fascinating possibility. Rumors spread among the media. The underground world might be connected to a tribe that vanished without a trace centuries ago. Under a bright spotlight, Stephen stood, microphone in hand, facing a local news anchor. It's all quite surreal, he admitted, sharing his initial disbelief and subsequent adventures. As tales of his bravery and curiosity aired, Stephen's status in the community soared. Invitations to local events, schools, and talk shows poured in. The modest farmer had become an unexpected sensation. Stationed in the shadows, Timothy's worries mounted. He watched Stephen bask in the acclaim, but with every camera flash, his own anxieties deepened. If my boss sees this, I could lose my job, he confided in a friend. From corner diners to grand conference rooms, the story became a topic of discussion. The mystery of the underground cavern permeated the national consciousness. Tourists, researchers, and the simply curious descended on the farm. Amid the throngs of visitors, a stooped elderly man stood out. His face, a map of wrinkles and sunspots, looked familiar to some of the older residents. Not one for crowds, the old man approached the farmhouse directly. After a brief exchange with a bewildered Stephen at the door, a request was made. A quiet, uninterrupted conversation was needed. The two men sat, the air thick with anticipation. The old man began, his voice a low rasp, sharing tales of youthful adventures, hidden secrets, and a deep bond with Stephen's grandfather. He spoke of buried truths, of cover-ups, and of a pact made all those decades ago. As the tale unfolded, the room's atmosphere changed from tense to surreal. The statues, the old man revealed, were art pieces, meticulous models crafted for a museum exhibition that never saw the light of day due to unforeseen controversies. They were buried, with Stephen's grandfather unknowingly involved. The town's most profound mystery was, in truth, an art project lost to time. At first, the revelation felt like the floor had shifted beneath Stephen, but as the weight of the truth settled in, he began to chuckle, soon growing into hearty laughter. The idea that their epic adventure had unveiled a buried art project seemed absurdly comic. Of all the secrets, he mused, wiping tears from his eyes, this is one for the history books. Stephen and Timothy's adventures had deepened their friendship, turning it into one filled with shared memories of laughter, challenges, and discovery. They often met at the Sinkhole Cafe, reminiscing and planning future adventures. Over time, the story of the Sinkhole and its mysterious tribe became part of the town's folklore, passed down with humor and embellishments. Though life returned to normal, the town was forever changed, with a new sense of pride and connection to the land. The Sinkhole had taught them to embrace and find joy in the unexpected.